Hey, what's up, Florida? And welcome to the first episode of FMTV, Florida Music Television. I'm your host, Vic Lima, and everybody knows me as the Beanie Guy. In today's segment, Where's the Beanie? Go to Quaker Steak and Lube in Clearwater to an annual charity event hosted by Mr. Bobby Frisch himself. And proceeds, of course, go into the Children's Home Network. And while I was there, guess who I ran into? Hey, who's that? We sit down with Robbie Steinhardt and we talk about his legendary career with multi-platinum band Kansas. Also his collaboration with local legend Stormbringer to create Steinhardt Moon Project. And with them he continues playing all of his classic hit songs while with Kansas. Later in the episode, damn, that's hot. Vic visits a drag racing buddy to check out one of his awesome hand-built hot rods. His dragster rendition of a 62 Corvette. We also go across the Skyway Bridge to Palmetto to Peggy's Corral for a fundraiser, Bikers for Backpacks, which proceeds go to D.L. Randall Foundation. And of course, I ran into one of my former assistants, Mrs. P. Paula Weeks, and her husband, Gene, who graciously donated their bike that he hand-custom built for her to the fundraiser. We also have some flashback of some of the Beanie Guys' birthday bashes. After that, memories from Daytona Beach at the Hard Rock Cafe. Stay tuned for this and more right here on FMTV, Florida Music Television. Go to Quaker Steak and Lube in Clearwater to an annual charity event hosted by Mr. Bobby Frisch himself. The proceeds, of course, go into the Children's Home Network. This is amazing. I get to sing with the future Hall of Fame rock and roller, Robbie Steinhardt, now. This is cool. How about these guys doing two shows to come out here and play for you guys? Thank you, Mr. Frisch. I'm telling you, that was awesome. He did it. Smoked it. Smoked it. Appreciate it, man. Hey, how many people think that the next band that's uh, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame should be Kansas beside me? Come on. Really? I see some of these bands out there. These guys changed musicians and people's lives for decades. Played some of the greatest music. I was a huge fan. I saw Robbie front the band in front of 15,000 people in Detroit one night. He was one of the best front men to run uh, any rock and roll extravaganza. One of my favorite vocalists of all time, Steve Walsh, one of my favorites, and the best songwriting in classic rock, I think. How about you guys? What do you think, right? So, as a future Rock and Roll Hall of Fame member, I just want to shake your hand and say thank you for helping the kids, my friend. I appreciate you. Give it up for Mr. Robbie Steinhardt in the house. Yes! Sometime We at FMTV congratulate Bobby Frist for doing this fundraiser for many years for the Children's Home Network and has raised tens of thousands of dollars for this great organization. And I tip my beating off to all the awesome talent, celebrity musicians who've donated their time for many years to this event. Congratulations, Bobby, and thank you for all your hard work over the years. While I was there, guess who I ran into? Hey, who's that? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Vic Lima here for Beanie Guy from the Florida Music Network, and you're here watching FM TV. We're here at Quaker Steak and Lou for a big child benefit for Children's Home, and of course, Bobby Frist is hosting it. And guess who I ran into? Another international superstar. 
This is Robbie Seinhart, uh, violinist for, of course, the infamous Kansas. How you doing tonight, Robbie? You doing all right? I'm doing great, thank you. Well, I gotta say, um, I've heard about you. I've been in the scene a long time. You play everywhere. Of course, you do this thing with Stormbringer, uh, Seinhart Moon, and you do some of the Kansas stuff. Uh, of course, uh, Stormbringer been around a long, long time. And uh, since I've been doing these interviews, I have three simple questions that will basically sum up an artist's career. So, are you ready for that? Yeah, sure. All right. Well, first of all, there's the beanie questions because I'm the beanie guy. So, our first question is, of course, at what age was it and what exactly was it that actually inspired you to get into music? Well, um, let's see. Uh, less, a little bit less inspiration and, and more forcefulness in, on my parents' part because um, they decided it was a good idea to make me play the violin. So. I started playing the violin at, at the age of eight, um, and then I went through a few different teachers, and um, I, I got to, luckily, when I was eight years old, I got to go to Vienna um, to an international school there, but I didn't study until I went back when I was 14, um, and I took a few lessons. I went to a school that had um, was owned by Britain and India and the United States, an American international school, they called it. Uh, with 500 kids in the school from kindergarten to 12th grade, if you don't think that was odd. Uh, but anyway, uh, after that point, uh, you know, being in junior high, that's when I, well, your next question I know, if I can just go on. It's like, what, what sort of got me into playing period um, was we got a band together in, in the eighth grade and played for the seventh grade party or prom, whatever, what have you, in junior high. So, and yeah, I, I, people my age call it junior high, so. There you have so it. that so that basically was my second question was of course you've got started how long uh, eight years old yeah, when you got yeah, started well, playing and uh, then my second question of course you answered it was about what age did you actually play in a band or get started playing live music and that was I guess in junior high school right um, so again uh, we we all are very familiar with your uh, you know fantastic career the luck that uh, Kansas has had multi platinum albums uh, you've toured all over the world probably dozens of times I would imagine. Yeah. And um, I guess my third question is basically before we move on to what you're doing today and why you're here, um, what is one of the most memorable or I guess moments of your life in this career that really stands out and makes you feel like, wow, I, you know, I've made it, you know, in the music industry? Well, probably the first time that that ever happened was um, there's a place about 45 minute drive north of Toronto called, I believe it's called Mossport Park. Um, and we got flown in there by helicopter and we were on the same, it was uh, one of those military transports and we had a couple different bands on there with us but uh, the, the Commodores was one of them and then the, the lineup was something like Dave Mason, the Commodores, Kansas, um, all kinds of bands that didn't actually fit together on the same bill but there were 93,000 people at that show. And, wow. and they told me that apparently it went up the hill, but then it also went back over the hill. There were people that we couldn't even see, which I thought was, why do you go to a concert if you can't see anybody? But, you know, but... Uh, what year was yeah, that, my ass? That do you was, remember? See, I'm really bad with dates, so I was afraid you were going to ask me that. It was, let's say early on, that's all I can say. All right. Well, fantastic. Um, well, we've got the music starting up back here, and of course, I'd love to sit here and, and go through that illustrious career of yours and that. Of course, Robbie Steinhardt from the infamous Kansas. So, my name is Vic Lima. We are right here at Quaker State, and we appreciate your time, Robbie. It's been a pleasure meeting you. So, right now, back at you guys, and uh, stay tuned for more FM TV, Florida Music Television. My name is Vic Lima. We'll see you again. Bye. Hey, I'm everywhere already, and you're watching FM TV. How you doing, Tampa Bay? Vic Lima here, the Beanie Guy, and we are here at a secret location once again. We're watching Florida Music Television, and this is our segment. Damn! That's hot. We're going to be interviewing my buddy here. He's got this 62 Corvette. He's also been drag racing all of his life, and he built this thing with his bare hands. So we'll be back in just a couple more minutes. Stay tuned, and you're watching FM TV.
Hey, how you doing out there? Vic Lima here, the Beanie Guy with Florida Music TV, FM TV. We have another segment with us today. Damn, that's hot. I got a friend of mine here. We're at a secret private location, and uh, for security purposes, we'll just call him Mark for now. And uh, Mark has been racing and building hot rods all his life as we have behind us a 62 Corvette. We'll get to that in just a moment. But I want to find out a little more about Mark because I've known Mark quite a long time. But he's been racing professionally and building hot rods all his life. So how you doing today, Mark? Glad hey, you can make you? it today. All right. And I, I met you about, uh, I don't know, about six, seven years ago. We worked at a shop together. And I didn't realize, uh, you know, how in, in, intense you were, a, a gearhead, so to speak, of, of hot rods and building hot rods, drag racing. You had a drag race. Uh, you had a dragster before. You had the 62 vet. Um, let's start from the beginning. What, how did you get involved in building hot rods? What age? What inspired you to? Well, I was pretty young and I just always liked cars and race cars. And, uh, I even started building cars up north. I'm from Milwaukee and I was 12 years old. My dad would get me a car and I'd work on it in the backyard. Never get it running, but I'd work on it. <laughs> and then I, we moved down here when I was 14 and uh, I painted a, guy, a car for a guy in exchange for a drag car he started to build and I finished it, it was a Nova and I finished it up and raced it for about eight years and then I bought a black dragster raced it and I bought I built a yellow dragster and I raced it for 12 years I raced out at sunshine never missed a Friday night in over 30 years wow and uh, won the race of champions at the Gator Nationals in 2012 Every, every car I raced was a track champ from Division 2 or something. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So you've got, uh, obviously I noticed tons of trophies you've got on the shelf here, and you said that's only a small amount of them. The eight-foot trophies are in the house. Right. That's incredible. Um, so if you was to throw a number out there, I mean, how many races have you won? I mean, dozens, obviously. Dozens, I mean, dozens, dozens of them. Huh? Back in the day when it was easier, yeah. <laughs> you know, I would win, you know, eight, nine, ten times a year, 12 times, and I've been track champion three times. So let's get down to business here. I've noticed this unbelievable, and let me tell you something, I've restored some cars in my time, which we'll get to another episode on that. Uh, but the 62 Corvette, tell me a little bit about this thing, and uh, you know, when did you start it, how did you start it, uh, from the ground up, and then uh, how long did it take you to do it? Well, I raced a dragster, and I wanted to build a car that I could drive on the street, but if the dragster broke, I could stay in the same class, so it had to be a fast car. Right. And it's, it's not a ground up restoration, it's a, I built the frame, right. I built the body out of body parts, uh, it's a pro model legal street car. It's got a 548 cubic inch big block Chevy with 871 rollers and two 950 carburetors. Uh, turbo 400 with a manual valve body. Uh, uh, the rear end I fab myself. It's got 40 spline axles with a spool. And I drive it on the street. <laughs> Incredible. And, and, and how long? I mean, this thing is, is magnificent as. Uh, PJ, our photographer, will show you with some of the photo footage we got. Uh, how long did it take you to build something like this? It took me over six years. Six years. Yeah, I'd come home from work and every day and be out here until 10 o'clock. And the weekends and everything else. Work Saturday and Sunday. I, I've been there too. I did I did uh, restoration myself for 30 years, and uh, now I'm in the insurance, you know, the collision part, as, as you are as well. Um, but, I mean, this thing is incredible. I mean, you, you said it's up for sale. It's actually up yeah. for sale. So if you have the right numbers... Um, you could drive home with this thing. Um, like I said, he asked me, he took it for a little spin, he asked me to get in it, I said, no way. I'm not one of the uh, fast types. Uh, I like my little Malibu. But I um, appreciate your time. You, you know, it, it was good to see you again. And just remember to stay tuned right here to FM TV, and uh, you're watching. Damn, that's hot. My name is Vic Lima, I am the Beanie Guy. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. I'm Miss P. We're at Peggy's Corral, and you're watching Florida Music Television. We'll be right back.
Hey, how you doing, everybody? Vic Lima here, the Beanie Guy with Florida Music Television. We're at Peggy's Corral, and damn, that's hot. How you doing, Paula? I'm fantastic. I see you got this beautiful bike that you're sitting on, and of course, I know uh, for a fact that your husband, Gene, built this bike for you, correct? Yes, he did. I'll tell you, what a great guy. Gene. Gene Weeks, buddy. He's sitting over here to the side. And of course, how long have you had this bike now? Oh, gosh. Two, two years? Almost, Almost two years yeah. now. And, um, I, well, you know, Gene, I guess I'm going to have to bring you into the photo. Come over here for just a second and talk about this bike. Tell me what you got on it and what it took you to build it. Well, the idea was my chopper is nine and a half feet long. Paula couldn't reach the pedals. She couldn't reach the handlebars. She wanted to ride. I said, okay, I'll build, build you a miniature version. So we built this little mini based on a 1200 Sportster, which is not a mini bike by any means. But we built this bike to fit her, and she rode it a few times, but the traffic in South Florida just made her crazy. She'll, she'll ride with me, but she doesn't, doesn't want to ride her own bike. So we saw this opportunity to raise some money for some kids and get them back to school and get what they needed. And we said, you know what? Rather than turn it into a piece of furniture, let's turn it into something good for the kids. That's fantastic. And tell me a little bit about the bike. Exactly sizes and motors, you what do you got? It started out as a 2002 Sportster 1200S, which was their racing motor, uh, dual plug heads. Um, and there's only a couple of parts left on the bike that started out original. One is the oil tank. And then there's a little side cover on the other side because you always got to keep something of the original bike. So those are the two parts that are original. The rest of it's all custom and hand fabricated. And it took me a year and a half to build it. And I took my time because I was building it for my wife. Right, yeah. and, and the paint job looks fantastic. Old school flame jobs. Who did that? Absolutely. Uh, that, that was done by Anomaly, uh, who was also, um, what's Danny's? Uh, Danny Pagano in Clearwater, spectacular guy, Danny Pagano, Pagano Auto Body, and he's got another company called Anomaly that does his off the side stuff. Right. And he he basically replicated the paint job on my bike right. so that we had twins. And right. he did a great job, and I think Paul's been happy with it. I love the bike. She's just a little yeah, afraid to ride it out in the traffic. She'll ride with me. It's I've all been, good. I've been to the house and I've seen both bikes. And of course, the last time I was there, this wasn't quite finished. But I did see the fact that, you know, obviously you were trying to make a bike that looked like yours oh, yeah, and, yeah. you know, a little smaller for her. So that's awesome. You see that, guys? Man making a bike for his wife. That's a great story. I love that. Hey, it keeps me out of trouble and <laughs> keeps me busy. And it's and so light. It's so light. I'm just, I'm just a little thing. <laughs> but I can lift this up with no problem. It's light. It's fun to drive. I absolutely love the bike. It's just the people around me that scare me. And yeah. it's actually a lot faster than my 113 SNS nine foot <laughs> chopper. It's a lot faster. Wow. Well, it's a little lighter and smaller, yeah, so I'm sure lighter. dynamic wise it goes a little quicker. But, um, you know, once again, thank you so much. They went ahead and, like I said, auctioned this bike off today and they raised some money. And, and, and you know, just some good people, the Weeks, Mr. and Mrs. Weeks here, just fantastic people. And like I said, People, you need to do the right thing. If your wife wants a bike, you can't buy one, just build it. <laughs> and you know what? If, if, if you only got a little bit, you still have to pay a little bit forward. And everything you got, whether it's big, small, whatever, just a little bit has to be paid forward. And that's what it's all about. Exactly. And, of course, we appreciate all your donations today and, of course, coming out. I'm going to take some shots of your wife, if you don't mind. We're going to do some don't modeling. But, again, like I said, you're watching Florida Music TV. And this segment is called, Damn, That's Hot. We'll be right back in just a minute.
I'm Mr. Sawbladehead, drummer, artist, audio engineer, and fabricator. I create inspirational, one-of-a-kind, functional works of art. Bold, beautiful, badass designs featured in homes, businesses, and concert stages around the world with some of music's biggest stars. From concept to conversation piece to live in concert, take a peek behind the curtain and witness the madness that is Sawbladehead Designs. started rock and roll already. Are you guys ready to rock? Yeah. It's one of my favorite up and coming acts right here in Pinellas County. This is Against the Sun. For your support, Terra for Tolerance Zero, come on, be more! Thank you, Thank you. One Eye Jack, let's hear it for this band! That kid was my favorite original band of 2018! On behalf of the 10 members of the network, it's my honor to present you guys with not only a rock band favorite, but a favorite supporter of the network. And I wish you guys continuous success with what you guys got going on tonight. Let's hear it for Wicked Evil Grid. Come on! Hey, what's up, everybody? Vic Lima here, the Beanie Guy. That's right, we're here at Richard's Bar and Grill today, Sunday, September 15th, for my birthday bash. That's right, I'm the Beanie Guy. And we've got all kinds of great stuff going on today. I've got three great bands. Against the Sun is on the stage right now. Of course, uh, Damon's new band, Blackbird Sanctuary. Pinella's favorite band, Den of Thieves. But 
I'm going to be awarding some artists that have been rocking the bay for decades. And we're talking about Argus, the one and only. I'm going to be rewarding those, all the members, and even the original members, later on today with some career achievement awards. Our motto is Argus fucking rules. Thank you very much. We love you. Of course, one of my favorite supporters and one of my first Tampa Bay Music Network award winners, Mr. Tommy Rocks, is going to be in the house. And he also is getting him one for 10 years supporting the network. And the big surprise, I have Greg Riley brought his tattooed sweethearts today. We're going to be doing a tattoo bikini contest. That's right. We got cash prizes. We got baskets. We got sponsors out in the parking lot. We got all kinds of things going on. So make sure you come on down. And if not, check out our highlights because we're launching our TV show, Florida Music TV, FM TV. FM TV Rocks! And coming up on our next episode of FM TV, I visit a hot rod building buddy of mine and follow him in his full frame restoration on an awesome 69 Camaro. Then we follow the beanie to Quaker Steak and Lube, Mike Dillon Benefit where I interview a bunch of artists who get together for Mike Dillon and help him raise some funds for his medical bills. Mike has been very active in the past for many benefits and charity events. He's very loved in the music community and it showed this day with the support from all his friends. Mike Dillon! We love you! Stay tuned for this and more right here on FMTV, Florida Music Television.